Hello, welcome to Friday's Hope. A place and a time where we share hope that we can use every day through every situation and every circumstance. My name is Sue and I am one of the ministers at the Worship Center Ministry. And I just want to tell you that there is hope regardless of the situation that you're going through, regardless of the struggle that you're going through. There is hope. I promise you there is. So what I want to talk about today <clears throat> is crisis and chaos. Oh my, doesn't that happen? You have a crisis, already dealing with that, and then chaos, more chaos shows up. Somebody gets upset. Your car breaks down. Your finances, your bank account short. You get offered a new job at your job and you have no idea what you're doing. Um, a million and one things can happen during a crisis that can cause even more chaos than what the crisis gave you in the first place. And now you're having to deal with all those problems too. We're already stressed by the first crisis and then life and people and situations bring us even more. And now we have to deal with all that. So what do we do? What do we do? How do we go through that? Any of you out there that's listening to me go through that? If you do, hit like, because I know y'all have. If you haven't, as my pastor says, keep living. It'll show up. <clears throat> so that kind of stuff, unless you deal with it right, can really cause you to take care of and deal with the stress in a real ugly ways that's not going to help your mental health, your physical health, not going to help your peace at all. That's not going to help you get through the stress. Later on, it's going to cause more stress. And what we want to do is we want to share healthy ways that will get you through stress, healthy ways that will help you walk through the crisis that show up in life because uh, they are going to show up unfortunately and believe me I have been dealing with some for the last month they have hit me square in the face I mean to tell you and so I had to reevaluate some of my things so the first thing I want to encourage you to do is be aware be aware of your emotions be aware of the way you're reacting and acting so <clears throat> I knew I was super stressed, but I kept doing what I knew to do until I realized I was more stressed than what I thought. What are some signs that you see that cause you to think, understand that you're more stressed than what you thought? There's a few of them for me. The two of them that showed me I was super stressed is I was getting ready for work. I dropped something. I wanted to pick it up and throw it across my home. A little bit of an overreaction to a minor problem. I knew I was super stressed. The other one is I didn't want to go anywhere. I did not want to leave my home. I All I wanted to do is get up out of bed and go to my recliner and then go back to bed. And I knew I was in a dangerous place. I love going out. I've got some friends I'm going to go out with tomorrow. Granted, it's a lighting center, but hey, they got some new stuff out there. I might find some good buys. But a week ago, I wouldn't have done that. If they went out there, we'll have said, okay, we'll talk to you later. I'm staying home. You know what I'm saying? It, it just doesn't work. So um, you got to know the signs of when you're super stressed. We all... We all struggle with stress every single day, getting up. You know the old saying, dear God, I haven't sinned. I haven't done anything bad. I haven't cussed. I haven't hurt anybody, but now I'm getting ready to get out of bed. Yeah, it's that bad sometimes. You got to know. You have got to understand the signs that you're super stressed. Now, the part about me just wanting to stay home and doing anything. Part of that's physical too. How many of you know stress takes the physical out of you too? And I understood that, but this was more. You know, you get eight hours of sleep and you want to go back to bed? Yeah, something's up. Um, so understand that 
that the physical some, sometimes is twofold. Sometimes it's because you're just tired from dealing with life, and I get that. And then sometimes it's, it's because of the mental struggle as well. Deal with that. Find out. Know which way is which and what's different for you. So holding on all that stress and trying to figure it out all, trying to figure out how I could take care of it. Yes, I still do that. Yes, I still do that. Oh my gosh, I can't even, I want to kick myself sometimes when I find myself doing that. It's like, really? You tell people, you know, that that you need to do this and you need to do that? You're sitting there trying to figure out how to do this? Come on. So when I figured out what I needed to do, how about you? Have you sat there and overthought thought things, overthinking, overthinking, overthinking? Yeah. Crazy thing. Doesn't help any, by the way. So the first thing I did after I got off work and I could get home is, oh, I maybe screamed at God. Well, not literally. But let me tell you what I did do. I let him have everything I was struggling with. Let me tell you what I let him have. Everything I was struggling with. Everything. From the tiny little details all the all the way up to the major chaos. I told him about the people. I told him about the finances. I told him about the vehicles. I told him about everything that went on. Okay? Guess what? He's okay with that. Guess what? He doesn't gossip about it. He doesn't get mad at us about it. He doesn't hold it against us. That's called grace. He loves us. He loves this. He loves us so much that he continues to listen to us and continues to say, I know my daughter. I know my son. I know this is tough. It's tough for you. And he's going to help us through it. Job. Y'all ever hear of Job? Y'all ever read the book of Job? Let me tell you about the book of Job. Job was a man who had everything wife kids grandkids each of the kids had their own home he had cattle he was rich beyond rich i mean he had servants he had everything and then within about the time frame of a week gone everything his kids his grandchildren, his cattle that he made money with, all the houses, his own house, his health. He was sitting in the corner scraping sores with broken pottery. Everything gone. Everything. And this is what he said. And see, this is a good example of how, how sometimes we have to share with God exactly what we're saying. Check it out. Job 3, starting with verse 3, May the day perish on which I was born. Why did I not die at birth? Why did I not perish when I came from the womb? He even was wondering why he was even born. For my sighing comes, from, comes before I eat and my groanings Pour out like water. Have you ever been to that place where you are so stressed that you just can't do much of anything except groan and be, um, be sad? But this is what he says. For the thing I greatly feared came upon me, and that what I dreaded had happened to me. Last verse. I am not at ease, nor... Am I quiet? I have no rest, for trouble comes. Ever felt like that? The stress was so strong, you didn't have any rest. You couldn't be quiet. You were struggling. It was always going through your mind. It was always affecting everything you did. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you hollered at people. Maybe you kicked the car that broke down. Maybe you went and complained to the bank. Maybe you uh, didn't even go to work when you found out you had this new position and you didn't even know what to do with it. I mean, there are a million ways we can deal with stress. Most of them are not healthy. Most of them are not. 
So Job was very honest on how he felt, okay? And he spoke straight to God about everything, everything. Be honest with your feelings. Come on. God already knows. God already knows. He knows them better than we do. He knows our innermost parts. He's the one that knit us together. He knows what our innermost parts are. And, by the way, if the crisis is still going on, keep sharing. He doesn't mind hearing about it time and again. He's going to give you the same thing, or he's going to give you new ways to deal with it, or he's going to give you more peace, or he can give you a million and one things when you keep sharing with him. Keep sharing with him. He's going to answer that. And he has an answer. Go to God. Admit how you're feeling. Listen to Lamentations 5.17. Our hearts are sick and weary. Our eyes grow dim with tears. Can you relate? You ever been that way? You just cried and cried? You were tired? I was talking a minute ago about being tired. Excuse me. Matthew 11.28. This, these are all in the New Living Translation. Then Jesus said, did he say he was upset with us? No. Nope. Did he say, well, you shouldn't be doing that? No. Nope. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. This version says, carry heavy burdens. Crisis is a heavy burden. And I, Jesus, is going to give us rest. Why? Because we give him the burden, and he gives us his ease. Psalm uh, 5, 1, a psalm of David. O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. He does, you know. He hears you when you talk to him. He hears you when you talk to him. Pay attention to my groaning. You ever want somebody to pay attention to you? You ever talk to somebody and you feel like they're not paying attention to you? God always pays attention to you. He hears your words. Psalm 17, 6. I am praying to you. This is what David said. I am praying to you because I know you will answer. Oh God, bend down and listen as I pray. You know, he does. He listens to us. He's listening right now to us. He's listening right now to me. God, help me be the, make this good. I want, to do, I, I want to do good by him. But I want you to have the hope. I want you to have hope. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer to me. Take heart. Remember Job? Remember Job? He was pretty, and he had a right to be pretty disheartened. He had a right to be upset. He had a right to be sad. He had a right to be depressed and down. But he still went to God. And and look at that. Look at the end of Job. I don't know if you've ever read through the whole thing, but the end of Job in chapter 46 says, first of all, he took back everything he said. In verse 1 through 46, he takes, he kind of fusses at God about all this and says, you know what? This isn't fair, God. Why would you do this, God? I prayed. I, I blessed my children. I did all this. Why, why are you letting this happen? Now he has to repent. He says, I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes, and I repent. You know, sometimes some of the things we say or do during crisis, we got to tell God we're sorry for, like me overthinking, me trying to handle it myself, me trying to fix it myself. Yeah, I had to ask God to forgive me for that because I know better. But God doesn't say, yeah, you're right. You know better. No. He says, come on, let's do this again. I'll help you through. And then look what happens. In verse 10. I love this. When Job prayed for his friends, you ever pray for the very person that's probably aggravating you through the crisis? You ever pray for the very person that maybe is making the crisis worse? 
Yeah, that's a toughie. But when Job prayed for his friends who were really picking on Job, who were really causing him problems through this whole thing, when he prayed for them, are you ready? The Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much, twice as much as what he lost. So if my fortune during this time is my peace, and I tell God I'm sorry for doing those things, and I start praying for my friends, guess what? He's going to restore my peace twice as much. He's going to give me the ability to do this twice as much. So start praying and give it to him. I'm leaving it right here for them, him to take care of. And trust him. There's a toughie. Trusting him. But we have to learn to trust him because he's not a man that he should lie. And he's not a man that's going to act like everybody here on earth. He's going to take care of them. He's going to take care of them. As says in 1 Peter 5, 7, Give all your worries, all your worries, not just some of them, but all of them. You can be honest with God. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? Because he cares for you. He loves you. He's going to take care of you. Hey, Lisa, good. Yes, amen. Yes, the Lord God loves us. So, yes, I get it. There's violence in the world. Look, these are not cure-alls to cure-all, but I do know they work. I do know that God loves us. I do know God's going to get us through this. I do know God's going to restore peace and unity. I do know God's plan is a whole lot better than mine. <laughs> a whole lot better. I know there's violence. I know there's major issues. I know people are going through huge issues. I watch the news. I watch this country. I watch people. But guess what? So does God. God watches you too. And he says, come to me who, all, who, all, who are weary and heavy laden. And he's going to give you rest. What you can do is ask for help. Won't you come and stop trying to fix it yourself? Won't you come and help you, help you get through it instead of being worrying or talking all that negative talk about it or, or, or being angry or drinking or drugs or alcohol or running around? Look, there's a million ways to take care of stress, but God's plan is a whole lot better and it works. You don't wake up with a hangover the next day. You don't wake up with panic or depression. You don't wake up with people being angry with you. You don't have to worry about panic, depression, negativity. You don't have to worry about any of that. He says he will restore us, Psalm 18, 6. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to God for my help. He heard me from a sanctuary. He heard me from heaven. Hello, he hears you from heaven. My cry, your cry, reaches his ears every time. Call somebody, pray, go to God, call somebody. If you or someone you know is in da is a danger to yourselves or others, reach out, reach out, reach out to a trusted friend. Choose your friends wisely. You want somebody that's going to encourage you and take you to Jesus. You want someone that's going to give you the things that you need to be able to um, do what's going to bring you healthy. That's not going to gossip about you. Call your call people. God created people to help. Call the Y. Call your pastor, your priest. Call the hospital, mental health clinic, the police. Look, there's all sorts of people out there that want to help you. And I know it's hard reaching out. I get it. But you're worth the effort of reaching out. Your life is worth the effort of reaching out and getting help. Reach out and keep reaching out. Just because the first time didn't work doesn't mean that it isn't going to work. It just means you need to keep reaching out and find the people that God designed to help you through. There are people out there. I know a young lady that 
has tried a couple of people to help her through, and she's finally found somebody that is doing amazing with her. She's even turning back to God. There's posts on her Facebook, which I happen to stalk every once in a while. There's posts on her Facebook that are directly related to God, and I love reading them. They're amazing. Psalm 73, 26, my health may fail. Our health may fail. And my spirit grows weak. Yes, it does. But God remains the strength of my heart, and he is mine forever. He's our strength. Oh, hear, Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. He's going to help you through time and again. Look, the enemy would have us sit in that mess. Just sit and wallow around in that hopelessness, in that mire of, of overthinking and worrying. Uh-uh. Don't even do that. Reach out to God. Reach out to people who will help and help you move forward. Ask God to help you move forward. Ask God to help you get out of that mess. It says in Acts 17, 21, For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your poets have said, we are also his offspring. We're his offspring. Wow. And if you're scared to move, ask God to help you with that too. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of alive, living. For to him all are alive. He's going to help you through. First Job uh, 5, for every child, for, I'm sorry, First John 5, I apologize. For every child of God defeats this evil world. You know, you can defeat the stuff that's bugging you, that you're having to go through. There's a day you may not have to go through it anymore. And we achieve victory through our faith, our faith in God. Who can win this battle against the world? Those who believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Those who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts this testimony is true. Whoever has the Son of Life has been given eternal life. Yeah, I have written this to you so you believe in the name of the Son of God. And we're confident that he who hears us, whatever we ask for anything, it pleases him, he will give us. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. He loves you. He's going to help you through. Everything and look, I just went through this. In fact, there were some things that happened yesterday. So this isn't something that oh, this happened in a long time. Mm -mm. I've been going through this for about a month. Guess what? God helped me through every single step. Once I asked Him to, yeah, you got to ask. He was there anyway. Who do you think was prodding me to ask Him? Yeah, God, the Holy Spirit. I prayed for the people. I prayed for the situations. I prayed for the finances. I prayed for the person for, with the job. I know. And I know this works. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, this works and helps you get through. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. If you feel this video has helped you or someone else, would you share it? Also, would you go to Friday's Hope Facebook page and hit follow? I need 27 more people, and then I can go live on that. This will be on replay on Friday's Hope as well, Facebook page as well as Friday's Hope YouTube channel. I hope this helps y'all. It really helps me. I know God's going to get you through. Nothing is hopeless. There's always an answer, and there's always a way. Through Christ, there's always a way. I love y'all. I'm going to be praying for you. God bless.